everyone, this is Shamin and I'm the founder and lead digital marketing consultant and trainer at Sky Digital Agency. In today's video, I would like to share with you how does Google Analytics work. For those of you who you do not know what Google Analytics is or you have heard of it before but you have never installed it on your website, okay, I highly encourage you to let your uh, web developer know that you would like to have Google Analytics integrated. Um, most importantly, what you need to do is you need to create uh, a Gmail account if you don't have one already, a personal Gmail account and you need to actually create this account under your Gmail. What happens is if it's created under a web developers, um, which is alright actually, but once you like to have control over it or you decide to switch a uh, web developer uh, over time, the person who created Google Analytics cannot be removed, although they can share the access. So I highly encourage you, if uh, you own a website, to have it on your own Gmail account. So personal Gmail actually works. Okay, so let's head over to uh, Google Analytics and I'll show you how you can create it. Alright, so you want to go to this website called um, google.com slash analytics and you will come to this page and all you need is a personal Gmail account and click on this button called start for free. If you're already logged in, when you click on start for free, it will direct you to the Google dashboard and you, you would actually be able to create your account immediately. Uh, account name is just something that will help you to identify uh, what is this uh, website about, what is this Google Analytics account uh, tracking. So usually for us, like we'll put like Sky, Digital, Sky, Sky CRM and we'll put like Sky Digital Agency uh, main website 2019 or something like that. So uh, if we have like sub pages, sub domains, or we have landing pages, we'll rename the website name accordingly, but they are all under the account name. So this is where you put in your URL, select your industry, the reporting time, time zone accordingly. So for us, we usually will select Singapore and we'll select, I mean, it's automatically selected for this one. Okay, so everything else should be checked and all you need to do is click on this button called Get Tracking ID. With the tracking ID, all you need to do is share that with your developer once they have it installed if it's WordPress plugin or um, either customization, HTML, they can all take this Google Analytics code. Once it's being installed, you should see, uh, you should be able to track analytics almost immediately. So within like the next two hours or so, you can log in and you would see some data if there are people actually uh, visiting our website or you can try visiting it uh, with different browsers. Okay, so from uh, Chrome, Firefox, you can use IE, Safari, just to use different browsers so um, to be sure that the data is coming in. All right, so you can actually track uh, the behave the audience if I'm not wrong the audience based on technology and the browser okay so within once the developer got back to you that they have installed the Google Analytics code over the next two hours three hours you can use different uh, browsers to browse okay and you will have some insights on which browser is browsing how much time they are spending on your website so as you can see here Typically, if we are using Chrome, it's seven minutes browsing time, whereas uh, Firefox actually drops quite a bit. Okay, so um, that's how you create your own Google Analytics code. I highly recommend, even though you might not understand Google Analytics right now, always have it installed because you need uh, data as well. So even if like a few years down the road, you like to revamp your website, at least there's some analytics for the next developer to look at. But of course, you should try to understand Google Analytics and some of the key uh, analytics that you can look at so that you understand how your website is performing and when you make certain changes, if you learn about a little bit about SEO, you make meta keyword and meta description changes and when you make like page title or even like increasing content on your uh, website, for example, like video content, etc., you should see the overall traction uh, going up. Uh, if your website is like totally new, your domain is brand new, you would actually see some results in three to six months. Uh, if your website is uh, 
existing and you, sh you, you have it for some time, you might see it faster. So maybe in one to two months, you see some results. The third month, you get more traction. Uh, for new domain names, if it's very competitive, um, it's not like something that uh, it's, it's niche, right? As a competitive, it's a common thing. Like, for example, social media agency, digital marketing agency, these are competitive industries. These are industries where people are already there for a long time. So uh, for you, results might take longer six months to 12 months even all right so uh, that's all I have for you let's go back to the dashboard to look at some of the analytics so uh, this is our dashboard and I just want to say like what after you have actually tracked one to two months worth of data you can come in and take a look uh, most of the time if your website is new uh, analytics do take time to come in as well I must uh, say that uh, it will be best if you allow Google Analytics to track two months worth of data so that at least you can uh, track the performance this month and last month. Usually your second month would have a slight improvement uh, compared to your first month and so should your third month as well. All right, Unless your business has like peak periods like in travel, there will be peak periods um, say for example April for June holidays or March for June holidays in that sense. Once you're in your dashboard, uh, this is what you want to do. Usually I compare month by month. So from 8 July, I'll compare it to uh, 9 June. Okay, so today it's uh the day has not ended, so I will not look at today's data because that would uh not be very accurate. What you want to do is I always tell um my participants, my clients, take a look at just a few values. Um, first you want to know who your audience are. Um, if you're a Singapore business, you would want to attract people from Singapore. Okay, so English language, that's good. So you can see majority of our traffic is from Singapore. The next is uh, US, all right? So, um, and then followed by India, France, okay? So uh, you want to make sure that at least 80% of your traffic is from the country that uh, you are able to make business on. So if you are an e-commerce store, dropping sh drop shipping store, then that's fine because you do make uh, sales from you are able to make business, you are able to make sales from other countries. But the next question you need to ask yourself is, are you making sales in those countries? So for example, if uh, people from US or people from Malaysia are looking at our uh, website and they do engage us for our training or our services, then that's fine, right? But if we get traffic from these countries and uh, we do not get business, so um, sometimes they're just researching, they're just looking at some courses available or you want to understand why you tr but try not to read too much into it all right so that's the first thing audience must be from your home country where you um, mainly have business from the next thing is acquisition acquisition basically helps you to understand um, whether you have uh, traffic from organic from social referral and email a lot a lot of our traffic is from direct so maybe people um, knew our website they came directly to the website uh, we do have a lot of traffic from social and organic search as well so that's good I always believe like um, diversifying the traffic is quite good not depending on one platform too much if I compare this to uh, for social it has increased by about 40 to 50 yeah users and for direct traffic it has dropped by 10 users Okay, the next thing we want to look at is site content, all pages. So there are just two things that I would um, bring to your attention. Number one is understanding what are the picks. If you are running ads and uh, it has picked, then that's fine. If you're not running any ads, but for some reason it has the traffic has doubled, um, that's when you want to take a look at what's happening all right so from if we compare last month so thursday and saturday might not be very good uh comparison right in 29 june was a saturday uh 30th of may was a thursday so if they compare this way it's not very accurate as well for me there was a peak 204 views instead of 48 that's probably due to our ads okay so per day if we do run ads uh, it drives like hundreds of traffic uh, in a day sometimes uh, if we have multiple ads it does add up so the next value I want you to look at is the amount of page view you have month by month by right it should be an increase if it has dropped 
uh, understand whether there's seasons to your business as well. And the next thing is average time on page. So on home page, the average time is 2 minutes 27 seconds compared to last month, which was 1 minute 59. All these things do add up. And if we look at the next value, which is cost listing page, it's going to show you how it looks like. If you go to our cost listing page, uh, we have our costs here. And the reason why I didn't just put uh, images on our website and the cost title and the price uh, is because we actually want uh, people to spend time on the cost listing page. So we have a summary, not, not much. We do by point forms as limitations to the amount of text you can have and five points to talk about the courses and people can click on learn more or the banner itself to uh, go into the uh, web course detail, okay, course detail page that we have to talk about the course. Uh, I just want to highlight one of the things that um, we have understood or one of the changes that we made. So when we first revamped this website, um, we didn't link the images into the course detail, but we realized that a lot of people were clicking on images or there was very low traffic to the course detail pages, but it's high traffic on the course page right cost listing page so once we linked it uh, there was an increase in traffic as well so uh, one of the key things to uh, note is you want people to spend time more time on your website you don't want them to just be viewing one page uh, one page and then they leave uh, is good if they found their content and they're spending a lot of time there before they left Okay, but you want them to go through different pages. So for us, what we did was even after they clicked through to a course, say for example, I clicked through on digital marketing strategy and sales funnels, I read through the entire page. All right. At the bottom of the page, what we did was we talked about the other courses as well. Okay, so they can actually click through and learn more about the other courses. So if I would like to understand more about personal branding, I can click and read through. Okay, so those are a few things that you uh, want to take note when you are doing Google Analytics. Even though you might not understand uh, entirely, always have this as a requirement for your web agency who's developing a website to include into your website. And always create your own account and you can generate the Google Analytics tracking code, pass it on to your web developer to have it installed. If they have installed it correctly, you should have uh, data of uh, different pages. So as you can see here, these are the data of our homepage slash means uh, our homepage index, courses listing, course detail page, expertise page, and the MailChimp page. So expertise actually increased by quite a bit. Uh, we used to have lesser traffic, okay? All right, but of course, uh, comparing to May, uh, it has dropped. But one of the things that you want to understand is what people are looking for. And when they go to expertise, do they just exit? Or do they actually, um, what kind of expertise services are they looking for from an agency? So those, those things... If you find that people are spending a lot of time on those pages, you want to improve on those content as well and track your conversion rates. So if I have um, 142 people uh, looking at our Instagram course, they are interested in this, but I have to ask myself, were there, were, were there sign-ups? So if they're, say for example, out of 142 uh, in that month, but I only had four sign-ups. Then I'd like to compare it with, say, MailChimp course. There's only 95 visits, but maybe they had there was four to six sign up. So you have to compare uh, from that perspective. Okay, so this is what Google Analytics does. Thank you so much for watching the video. That's all I have for you today about how does Google Analytics work. This is Charmaine, founder and lead digital marketing consultant and trainer at Sky Digital Agency. Those of you who have Google Analytics, do drop a comment below. As yes, if you have any questions at all about your the data that you're collecting, how to go around it, you can join us at our one-day workshops, SEO, Internet Marketing Fundamentals for Beginners, or you can join us for Digital Marketing Strategy and Sales Funnels. We talk about Google Analytics. We help our clients out to um, point them to the right data and help them to understand uh, what is on their website and what are things that they can improve with the analytics that we see and we encourage them to continue monitoring their data that they are collecting month by month, quarter by quarter. And hopefully, eventually, you see that consistent improvement of um, 
organic traffic to your website, social media traffic, referral traffic to your website as well. And if you have any questions at all, feel free to comment below. If this video has been helpful, do give it a like, do give it a thumbs up, do remember to subscribe to us. If you are viewing this uh, video on YouTube, do hit the subscribe and notification button. If you are viewing this video on Facebook, do also follow us on Facebook. We release more long-form content like this on, on Facebook and infographic content as well. We have a lot of infographics on Instagram, so uh, subscribe to us. We hope to share more content like this and with your help, Engage, engaging with our content, liking our content, subscribing to us, it will help us to con create more content like this. All right, so I definitely look forward to seeing you at our workshops if you have more questions about Google Analytics, digital marketing in general, or SEO. All right, so we have um, many courses that we're offering right now uh, at our agency to help equip other business owners, individuals, marketers uh, with better knowledge about digital marketing to do better online, better online presence for their business uh, and even for personal branding as well. So thank you so much and we look forward to hearing from you.